Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to do a really quick overview of the Android Studio, specifically trying to open and kind of navigate a typical bundle or AAB file. Now this is going to be something that I built using AppGyver, so it's a free codeless development platform, so it should already be some kind of like a compiled bundle, but it will at least give you a walkthrough of how to use the basics of Android Studio. Now, what we're going to do is, in this case, we know we already have something to use. So, we're going to go to Open, and then we would just find that bundle file and click OK. Now, it could take a little while for this to load, especially depending on the size and amount of content in your file. Also, bearing in mind, this is going to change based on how you've actually built and compiled your code, the content in it, etc. So, for this, it's going to have a pretty similar look for other people who use AppGyver, which again is a free Codeless development platform. I have some video tutorials over at CodelessFix.com if you're interested in taking a look. Now, going through some of the basics. So one of the first thing, which we can't do because we've already compiled everything, but up here there is an option for code completion. So if you're actually writing out the code yourself, you could use this. So basically the intelligent code completion, it suggests relevant code snippets and classes as you type and it helps you to save time and reduce errors. So that's something that you could do if you're building from scratch. Now, another thing to note is you can customize different shortcuts in Android Studio. So if that's something you're interested in doing, you could work to do that as well. But there are some additional navigation options just to kind of help you with basically just being a little bit more efficient as you're going through. Now going into the file structure portion, which is what we have right here. Again, this will depend on the app that you have. But right here, we see our structure right here. So we have our base. And then you'll see based on the percentage of download size, so you can see in my case, the assets contain a smaller percentage, but still a decent percentage of the overall content. Now, a couple of things to note here, you do see your raw file size, and you can actually break down these folders and look at the contents inside. So you'll see this first folder here has a pretty considerable size, and then you can also break down into further folders and just kind of see what's actually contained within. So if you needed to, for example, let's just say you wanted to go to your assets and you want to view your images because your app is massive and you realize that you didn't scale your images in size. You could theoretically go in here and take these image assets and then you could decrease the file size. So you could, if you were able to export them out and then decrease the file size, bring them back in. Now, there are some editing options in Android Studio as well. The main thing to note here is when you're doing something like that, make sure that you're addressing what you need to from a user perspective related to resolution and things of that nature. The last thing you wanna do is try to take out some images and then break your application. Now, going over a couple of other things in Android Studio. So again, you can basically just kind of scroll through. This should remind you of kind of like File Explorer in really just any of the Windows operating systems. So you have the a variety of different assets up here, which are going to be some of the required things needed for running your application. Then you have your assets. So things like your various fonts that are going to be used, your index bundle, images, etc. Now you'll have other things that you can scroll through. For example, if you want to look through the root, you can check out the different options and properties here. You have this manifest folder as well with the XML. So again, quite a few different things that you could scroll through and review from within this uh, Android Studio application. Now, a few other things to note is you do have a couple of other options within Android Studio. Most of them are going to be beneficial to people who are creating their actual applications themselves. For example, there are things like when we're going up here, you have the option for refactoring. You also have the option to migrate and then you can remove unused resources. So you have all of these different things to keep your app simple. You can also generate signed APK, uh, APK files, deploy modules to an app engine. But a couple of other things that you can do, assuming you have this set up, is you can run and debug and do tons of different things from within Android Studio. 
There are also quite a few different tools such as getting things set up with your device manager, SDK manager, resource manager, and additional options throughout here as well. If you're looking to basically just um, add really any additional functionality that you need to. So you do also have options, for example, <clears throat> if you needed to look at your manifest XML file that has information about the app, like permissions and activities, you can view the resources like layouts, draw tables and strings. You have a classes.dex, which contains your compiled code. You have assets, which again, we've already gone through, and then the meta-inf. So that's something that's going to be as we're scrolling through right here. And that is going to be the metadata files, like the signature of the APK. So you have quite a few options as far as managing based on whatever it is that you need for your specific use case. But again, as you're kind of scrolling through, most of this functionality won't be available to me. For example, a lot of these options under refactor or code, because I've already, this has already been compiled by a third party, but you do have the option to analyze the code, inspect, do code cleanup. So there's quite a few different things that you could use to essentially automate the process of cleaning up your code and getting it to a functional state. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.